probably in 2025, we at Meta, as well as the other companies that are basically working on this, are going to have an AI that can effectively be a sort of mid-level engineer that you have at your company that can write code. Mm. And once you have that, then in the beginning, it'll be really expensive to run, and then you can get it to be more efficient. And then over time, we'll get to the point where a lot of the code in our apps and and including the AI that we generate is actually going to be built by AI engineers instead of people engineers. You see, while the popular interpretations scratch the surface, the real dynamics of what's being said go far deeper, even for those analyzing it at face value. So today, we're unpacking the nuances, what's really being said, and why it matters. The clip in question features none other than Mark Zuckerberg, CEO of Meta, who's predicting a monumental shift in how AI could revolutionize code development by 2025. But before we dive into the details, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to AI Gridlock for all the latest insights into AI and tech innovation. Now, do I agree with Zuckerberg? To an extent, yes. But when you dig deeper, things might not be as straightforward as they seem. In the first part of this video, I'm aligning with the majority view. For now, most code is still being written by engineers. But here's where it gets interesting. Zuckerberg isn't the only tech leader making waves with bold predictions. Let me take you back to 2024. Amazon's cloud chief made headlines with a leaked statement during an internal fireside chat. He claimed that developers might stop coding altogether once AI takes the reins. This revelation, uncovered by Business Insider, painted a jaw-dropping vision of the future. Now, why does this matter? Because statements like these aren't just speculative. They're a pattern. They reveal a recurring theme among top executives of billion-dollar companies. On the surface, it might sound bleak. But here's the kicker. There's more nuance here than meets the eye, and many are overlooking the critical implications. In the rest of this video, I'll break down what everyone's missing and explain why this isn't just about AI replacing engineers. It's about reshaping the very fabric of how innovation happens. Stick around, because this is one discussion you won't want to miss. The Amazon CEO said something incredibly intriguing. If you project forward 24 months, taking us to June 2026, it's possible that most developers won't be coding anymore. While he didn't make a definitive prediction, this statement highlights a transformative shift in how we think about the role of developers. He also made a crucial point. Coding itself isn't the skill. It's simply the language we use to communicate with computers. The true skill lies in innovating, creating meaningful, user-focused solutions. And on that note, I agree with him to a large extent. It's not about whether developers will work, but rather how their roles will evolve. But let's move beyond the speculation for a moment. Instead of focusing on the words of any particular CEO, let's turn to the data. Benchmarks give us a clear quantitative view of where AI systems stand today, and more importantly, where they're heading. For instance, just four or five months ago, we were tracking the SWE, Software Engineering Benchmark. At the beginning of 2024, AI systems hovered around a 7% performance level. Fast forward a few months, and those numbers skyrocketed to 38 to 40%. That's a dramatic leap in a short amount of time. However, there's some nuance here. The highest score we recorded came from a model called Cosine Genie. Strangely enough, it's no longer on the leaderboard, possibly due to an error or re-evaluation. But the trend is clear. AI's capabilities in coding are accelerating rapidly. And that brings us to the crux of this discussion. The role of developers isn't disappearing. It's transforming. AI may handle much of the routine coding work, but the human element, innovation, creativity, and designing experiences that resonate with users remains irreplaceable. Let's take a step back and compare where we were five months ago to where we are today. Back then, the SWE benchmark, a notoriously difficult test for AI systems, showed models scoring around 38 to 40 percent. Fast forward to now, and we've seen an incredible leap. Verified results show performance reaching an impressive 62%. That's nearly a doubling of capability in such a short time. What's even more fascinating is how this progress is being driven. Code Story, Midwit Agent, and SDE Search collectively pushed these scores higher, with Code Story leading the pack. Keep in mind, this benchmark isn't something baked into the training data. 
It's a robust test of real-world coding skills. Month by month, these systems improve by 25%, steadily pushing the limits of what's possible. At this pace, it's not unreasonable to think this benchmark could be cracked within two years. Now, here's where it gets even crazier. A recent update shows the O3 model reaching 71.7% .7 on the SWE benchmark, a dramatic improvement in just a year. Think about that for a moment. Benchmarks that doubled in performance over such a short span. If this trend continues, could we see AI systems achieving near 100% accuracy within 18 months? It's possible, but there's a catch. Cost. O3's current capabilities are impressive, but they come with a hefty price tag. While models tend to get cheaper over time, the question remains, will they become cost-effective enough to be widely adopted in real-world applications? That's something we'll need to keep an eye on. Here's another compelling point. O3 isn't just excelling in general benchmarks. On competitive platforms like CodeForces, it ranks in the top 1% of coders, a staggering achievement for what is only the second iteration of this model series. For context, the first iteration, O1 Preview, was promising, but nowhere near this level. And here's the kicker. O4, the next iteration, is expected to debut in 2025. If the current trajectory holds, we could see even more remarkable breakthroughs. It's a testament to how quickly AI is reshaping what's possible in software engineering. Take a look at this short clip highlighting these advancements. And as we circle back to what OpenAI is saying about the future of software engineering, it's clear we're on the brink of a paradigm shift, one that's both thrilling and a little daunting. So on the left-hand side, we show the coding evals. So it's like code forces yellow, which measures how good a programmer is, uh, and the higher is better. So as we can see on the plot, with more thinking time, all three mini is able to have like increasing yellow all outperforming O1 Mini, and with like median thinking time, it's able to measure even better than O1. Yes, yeah, so it's like for an order of magnitude more speed and cost, we can deliver the same code performance even, on this even, or even better or even better. Right. So although it's like the O3 Mini high is still like a couple hundred points away from Mark, it's not far. It's better than me probably. Um, but just an incredible sort of cost to performance gain yeah, uh, over exactly. what we've been able to offer with O1, and we think people will really love this. Yeah, I hope so. So on the right-hand plot, we show the estimated cost versus cold forces yellow trade-off. Uh, so it's pretty clear that O3 Mini defines like a new uh, cost-efficient reasoning frontier on coding. Uh, so it's achieved like better performance compared to better performance than O1 with a fraction of cost. Amazing. Uh, with that being said, I'm, um... As I mentioned earlier, let's dive into what OpenAI has been saying about software engineers and the future of AI. The person you see here is Noam Brown, a key figure at OpenAI who specializes in reasoning systems. He played a pivotal role in the development of the O1 series, focusing on how reasoning and the exploration of new possibilities can drive innovation. In a recent interview, Brown shared some fascinating insights. He explained how the O1 model already functions in ways similar to a software engineer, providing a potential glimpse into the future of AI's role in large tech companies. This perspective is particularly exciting because it suggests that AI systems aren't just tools, they're evolving into collaborators. Now let's address the elephant in the room, cost. Advanced AI systems like O1 are undeniably expensive. However, consider this. If these systems can perform tasks equivalent to a software engineer at a fraction of the cost, they could represent significant value for companies. For context, the average salary of a software engineer often exceeds $250,000 per year. If AI systems can deliver comparable performance for less, they could fundamentally alter how organizations think about workforce efficiency and innovation. This isn't about replacing humans. It's about redefining roles and reallocating resources to maximize potential. O1 does feel, at least to me, uh, and I think other people on our team, like a better coding partner um, than the other model. Um, I think it's already authored a couple of PRs in our, in our repo. Um, and so in some ways it is acting uh, like a software engineer um, because I think software engineering is another one of these STEM domains that, that benefits from longer reasoning. Uh, I don't know. I think that uh, the kinds of 
uh, rollouts that we're seeing from the model are thinking for a few minutes at the time. I think the kinds of software engineering uh, job that I do when I, when I go and write code, I think for more than a few minutes at a time. Um, and so maybe as we start to scale these things further, as we start to follow this trend line uh, and let O1 think for longer and longer, it'll be able to do more and more of those tasks and we'll see. You'll be able to tell that we've achieved AGI internally when we take down all the job listings. And Now let's flip the script a bit. Up until now, we've discussed bold predictions from people like Mark Zuckerberg and Amazon insiders. Claims that human coders might eventually become obsolete. But here's the twist. Even if companies reduce their hiring of software engineers, I firmly believe that if you're a software engineer today, your value is about to skyrocket. This isn't just optimism for the sake of it. It's backed by research that even surprised me while preparing for this video. Let's look at a key finding from the World Economic Forum's Future of Jobs report for 2025. Among the fastest growing job roles projected through 2030, software and application developers rank fourth. Think about what that means. The WF is one of the most credible organizations when it comes to forecasting global trends and their data points to a future where software developers are not only relevant, they're indispensable. So why is this the case in an era where AI systems are increasingly capable of handling coding tasks? The answer lies in a fascinating concept known as Jevons Paradox. This economic principle states that when a resource becomes more efficient to use, demand for it increases. Let that sink in for a moment. As AI makes coding faster and more efficient, the demand for software and the experts who can innovate with it will grow. This isn't about AI replacing developers. It's about developers leveraging AI to reach new heights of creativity and productivity. If anything, this tells us that software engineers will play a pivotal role in shaping the future of technology, not in spite of AI, but because of it. Now, let's break down how Jevons paradox applies to software development and why, in my view, the industry is set to expand despite or even because of AI advancements. Here's the deal. When a resource becomes more efficient, it becomes cheaper and more accessible. This newfound affordability leads to higher consumption and broader adoption. So what does this mean for software developers? Let me walk you through it step by step. Stage one, lower barrier to entry. AI tools are making coding more accessible than ever. This means applications can be developed faster and at a much lower cost. Suddenly, creating software isn't just for large corporations. It's something startups, small businesses, and even individuals can afford. This opens the door to niche and experimental products that were once too costly to justify. Stage 2. Exploding software use cases. As development becomes cheaper and faster, businesses can launch more apps, platforms, and products across a wider range of industries. AI enables this surge, but it also creates new challenges. More software means more demand, not just for coding, but for people who can supervise, debug, and refine these AI-driven creations. Let me break this down further. Even with AI writing code, we'll need software engineers to supervise and verify AI-generated code for correctness, design software architecture and align it with business goals, address complex logic and edge cases that AI might struggle to handle, create and improve the AI models themselves, a rapidly growing field why demand will surge. Here's the kicker. Even though AI tools lower the barrier to entry, they also increase the need for skilled developers who can take these projects to the next level. Think about it. As more people create apps and automations, there will be a growing need for experts who deeply understand the back end, the code base, and how to connect it all seamlessly. So while it might seem like software developers are becoming obsolete, the reality is the opposite. The industry is expanding, and skilled developers will be more essential than ever, not just for coding, but for steering the future of technology in a world increasingly shaped by AI. Now, let's address the idea of fully autonomous software engineers, SWEs. Sure, companies are going to push hard to reduce costs and automate as much as possible. But here's the reality. The ecosystem as a whole is evolving, and it's placing skilled developers in higher demand than ever before. Don't just take my word for it. Let's look at some evidence. Recently, Apple posted a job listing for a software engineer, and what stood out was their emphasis on experience with AI agent-based frameworks like Crew AI and Langchain. This shows a clear shift in what companies are looking for. 
specialists who can leverage these new technologies to drive innovation. Here's what's fascinating. If you're already a software developer or have any experience in this space, you're in a prime position to excel. Many of these AI-driven frameworks, like Crew AI or Langchain, build on principles and workflows you're likely already familiar with. In other words, your skills are more valuable now than they were before AI entered the picture. Apple's job posting is just one example of a broader trend. Companies are actively seeking talent to specialize in these cutting-edge tools, which signals that the industry isn't shrinking, it's expanding. And here's another perspective. During a recent discussion on the YC, Y Combinator YouTube channel, the panel talked about how software developers could actually gain more leverage in the AI era. Why? Because as AI tools proliferate, it's the human developers who will guide, refine, and maximize their potential. So while automation is undoubtedly reshaping the landscape, it's not a death knell for software developers. It's an opportunity. The key is to stay adaptive, learn these emerging tools, and position yourself as an expert in integrating AI into the broader software development process. Now it is actually more leverage. It is far more leverage to know how to code than ever before. That's exactly and it's right. actually even more important and it will make you way more powerful. Like you don't have to be all the way in the weeds on everything. You actually are going to be able to um, like orchestrate this giant army of agents. And uh, I think of Mickey Mouse and Fantasia, just like, you yeah. know, like learning this new magical sort of ability. And like, I love that. you know, suddenly all the brooms are like, you know, walking and talking and dancing. And it's this incredible menagerie of being able to build whatever the heck you want, whenever you want, just like, like literally from any computer, yeah. from any web browser. Yeah, I, I try to come up with uh, like a Moore's law type type thing where it's like the return on on learning code is like doubling every six months or something like that. So learning code a little bit in uh, you know 2020, um, you know, w was not that useful because you would still you well you get blocked. You wouldn't know how to deploy something. You wouldn't know how to configure something. Let's go to 2023 with ChatGPT. Learn to code just a little bit. We'll get you fairly far because ChatGPT can help you. And then 2024. Learn to code a little bit is a massive leverage because we have agents like this and others, and there's a lot of really cool tools out there like Cursor and others that will get you super far by just like having a little bit of coding and, and just extend that forward. Like six months later, you're gonna have even more power. So programmers are just on this massive trajectory of increased power. Here's the key takeaway. If you're a software developer, the game is changing, but it's not over, it's evolving. Those who embrace AI agent workflows and understand how to manage and optimize these digital employees will have more leverage than ever. You won't just be writing code, you'll be leading the charge in how systems interact and innovate. I hope this video helped shed some light on this nuanced shift, especially given how many perspectives I've seen that oversimplify the conversation. The future is exciting, and it's brimming with opportunities for those who adapt and embrace these changes. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.